So our third presentation will be introduced by Michael Foster. Michael Foster is a member of our foundation board. Michael, come on up here. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Michael Foster, member of the foundation board and a very happy customer of Virginia Hospital Center um, Health. And um, I'm here tonight to introduce Rich Krummenicher and his colleague, Taryn Overman, to talk about facilities. And as an architect and a happy patient, I really think it's an important topic. I've known Rich for probably 20 years, first as a very bright, capable engineer doing great work in the industry, then running many projects for Arlington County, where he was a client, and now taking on this amazing responsibility of facilities and their role in care for our patients. Just like healthy practices, healthy environments through design have a big impact on outcomes. I remember when I was a patient here, just walking in to Dr. Hong's environment. Everything was designed. Everything was thought through. It was an entirely different experience. And when you go in and you feel the care and attention through design, and I wasn't even an expectant mother. Can you imagine how somebody delivering a baby would feel? I mean, come on. All I had was cancer. You know, you think it was pretty technical, but it gives you a great confidence in the people, in the process. And there's many studies that in my work as an architect that a healthy environment affects employee retention, absenteeism, performance. And if you want your doctors, nurses, and staff to be operating at peak performance to serve you and the community, you want an environment that supports them. So Rich, thanks for all you're doing and uh, consider yourself introduced. Thank you, Michael, I appreciate that. And, and I want to second Melody, I appreciate everybody coming out on a Monday to be able to listen to us and these great things that we have going on at BHC Health and to kind of pitch these ideas out there. So our challenge, let me make sure I got this working right, all right. So right now, VHC Health averages about 4,000 babies per each year, making us the second busiest hospital in Northern Virginia. So being an engineer, I wanted to back check this. So I went today and I checked how many deliveries so far this year. And we have about 3,500 babies. Exactly is, I'm not, 3,465, which actually puts us on track to beat that 4,000 number by a good two, two to 300 um, deliveries. And we're definitely trending up because our volume last year was about 3,900 deliveries. And when Rich and I were talking about these numbers, we were looking at these statistics today, I said, Rich, this is 4,000 babies, but this is 4,000 families. And that really hit us hard when we started talking about this presentation today. Yeah, absolutely. It's not just touching one patient, but mom, dad, all, you know, all the other families involved with it, the grandparents and so on. So um, the anticipation is next year we're going to have 5,500 deliveries of VHC Health. So what's driving that? We're increasing our footprint in the Northern Virginia area by adding uh, OBGYN practices. In the last two years, we've actually added five sites, North Arlington, South Arlington, Annandale, uh, Old Town, Alexandria, and Vienna. And in the next year, we're also going to add OBGYN practices in West Springfield, Tysons, and Kingstown. But also some other reasons we're having this tremendous growth is Kaiser patients are coming here due to patient preference. Um, Post-pandemic family planning activities are picking back up to where it was in pre-pandemic. Um, and the number one reason is folks are choosing, they choose a delivery hospital based on word of mouth. We've been doing an excellent job in care and outcomes and outreach. So it's building up our reputation. A lot more folks are coming to VHC Health. So our um, patient engagement survey tells us that 96% of OB patients are likely to recommend VHC Health. 
And as a mother who delivered all three of her children at VHC Health, I had a choice and I choose to deliver at VHC Health. And you want, you hear what your friends say. He said word of mouth, it's true. Um, what do they offer? What are the different things you can do? How do they treat your partner? What is this environment like for the support person and the families? So it's really true that moms talk uh, and they want the best and they wanna know what are the amenities and what are they gonna see, hear and do during this experience. And so that's why it's really important for us to not only give our patients the best and live out the VHC mission, but really keep up with the times and make sure we are offering an outstanding experience from the moment they enter to the moment they exit. So let's talk about our current condition and the state of the women infant health facilities here at VHC Health. So just that includes labor delivery, NICU, um, our lobbies where you come into the uh, facilities and so on. All of these areas with the exception of postpartum have been renovated in the last five years. So they look great, you come up, we just did a, the main entrance, it's a, you know, the lobby's been done on the first floor, you come up to the third floor, that's done. L&D, we just renovated 12 rooms, we're gonna renovate another four rooms this upcoming year. But postpartum has not been renovated since the 1990s. So what our goal is, is to be able to, from the point you come into the building, to where you give birth, where you go to postpartum, and where you leave the building, it's a continuous feel, continuous design. The finishes come together, the colors come together, and it provides a great patient experience and it also provides a, a great consistent patient experience. So let's talk about what the renovation scope of work would be for, these, for the uh, postpartum rooms. It's uh, going to be touching on the size of the rooms. We're actually going to be touching the, the, bed, the bathrooms in each of these um, Patient rooms have not been renovated since 1990, but it's going to be able to expand these bathrooms, make them more usable, open them up, clean look. We're also gonna be adding artwork. We're gonna be putting individual HVAC controls in. We're gonna update the finishes throughout. So that's the ceiling, that's the flooring. We're gonna replace the windows. We have, the building's 1973, so it has single pane windows. So you can get draft for those windows. Replacing those with new, modern, double pane windows. Um, also touching on the individual temperature controls, as I touched on that, updating technology to have smart TVs so you can stream what you want. Potentially even order your food from the TV that goes down to our food and nutrition services. Um, and then also providing a quiet space, privacy. And also in addition with that technology, nothing would be better than having charging stations available to you so you can plug in your phone, your computer, or whatever that may be. So, so the ask here, so closing the gap, to be able to upgrade these 50 postpartum rooms, which again have not been touched since 1990, is $3 million. And that would, be, that would give our patients, the families, a, continu a continuous experience from when they enter the building, when they have their baby, when they go to postpartum, and when they exit the building, with a happy baby and a happy family, of course. So we're gonna hop over to so I am here as the voice of the patient. So you've heard the architect, you've heard the engineer. Let me tell you about being a mom at VHC Health and what it could be if we drive our mission to be the best. So as I said before, I had three kids at VHC Health. They're now eight, five, and two. I received outstanding care. But there were a couple things that when I envisioned this renovation would just make it even better. So I don't know how many of you in the room have ever had a C-section, but I had two. And I know I heard some of you laugh when you talked about outlets and USB ports. Try getting out of bed to plug in your phone so you can talk to your mom or send pictures of the baby after a C-section. I did it, it's not fun. And so if there were just a little USB port there, I could plug it in and then I would never have to have that experience of trying to get out of bed. The other piece that I wanted to touch on when I saw what the renovations were that really kind of struck me was the shower. So I know a lot of people look at it and it's tile, it's a curtain, it's, it's a bathroom, like what's the big deal? But for all of you women in here that have had a child, that shower is a big deal. It's your first moment of like quiet. It's the first time you meet this new body and you're readjusting to what this is. It might be the first time you actually have realized that you are now a mom and have to figure out what you're going to do when you go home. So if we can give moms their first shower just in peace, and in a spa-like retreat, wouldn't that be nice? And if we can do it, why not? And I think it's really important to think about the postpartum period. The hardest part 
is actually when you go home with a little baby and no instruction manual. So I feel like if we could give them a an environment filled with hospitality and darkness instead of uh, an environment that feels so much like a hospital, it would just make the experience so much more comfortable. And just a little statistic I wanted to throw out there, 20% of women experience postpartum depression. And a lot of that depression starts with frustration and feeling like you just can't get done what you used to get done and trying to balance all of these hormones and feelings. So if we can just make it a little easier on our postpartum moms, I think it's our responsibility as the community organization to do just that and make it a little bit more comforting, a little bit more therapeutic, and give them the little comforts at home that make life a little easier. So if you're interested, come join Taryn and I at the Farragut Conference Room. Um, we actually have displays, cool renderings of what all these things are gonna look like, and we actually have finishes where you can touch the tile, the cubicle curtains, the paint, the flooring, all that kind of good stuff. So thank you, I appreciate everybody's time tonight, and I'll hand it back over to Mr. Tony. Thank you very much. So Taryn, just for the record, I did not have a C-section. But I am, my, my wife said I couldn't handle it, and that's why women have babies, because men are too weak to go through all that. So she, I would agree with that. And uh, thank you very much, Taryn, for giving that great perspective as a VHC mom.